Hello everyone, welcome back to a video here on Play on GA with me, Seamus Brady, your host, and for this one, I am joined once again by the other host, Luke Payton. And we are going to run through all of the action from the opening round of the Allianz Hurling League Division 1 in 2023. Luke, before we get into the games, I think it's fair to say that this year the league has a bit of an interesting dilemma in terms of who takes it serious and who doesn't. I mean, you think back to last year, the teams that didn't really take the league seriously being Limerick, Clare, Kilkenny, all went on to have great championships, whereas Waterford won the league and then looked like they'd completely ran out of steam by the time the championship came around. On the flip side, you've new managers galore, Derek Ling with Kilkenny, Davy Fitz with Waterford, Liam Cahill with Tipperary, Pat Ryan with Cork, Michal Dunahue with Dublin. That will all be looking to make a good start with their new county sides. Like, it's definitely an interesting one to see how serious teams take it this year. Yeah, well, look, I think I'd be encouraged by week one that <clears throat> that everybody was kind of going on with this narrative that the league is nearly unwatchable and that you can't take anything out of as well. I think we got some really, really good games. I think in, in comparison as well as last year, I think when Limerick came back in the league, that look, they looked miles off and they looked like they hadn't really been doing any hurling at all and they looked like to be in a very heavy training load. That wasn't the case at the weekends that I thought Limerick hurled really, really well. For large parts of that too, missing there, I think they had seven players from the starting team last year. They hurled pretty well. They did run out of steam a little bit, but they're only four weeks back in training. So, I think if people can just accept that, yeah, the league is uh, like the league's not perfect and stuff as well. And yeah, the structure needs to change. It does need to change. And that, yeah, if they got rid of the league, the semi-finals, and they had the final on a week earlier, I think that would go a long way to fixing it. And also, I do think, look, the fact that there is no incentive to avoid relegation because of the, the structure, the way it is with Westmead being there, the leash being there, and Antrim as well, is that those, look, realistically, two out of those three teams will be relegated this year. And we know that at the start. So that's, look, that's the real fundamental issue, I think, with the league, is that if they can go back to a 1A, 1B system where you have two of the top sides in 1B, and then that gives still gives exposure to the, the developing counties. And then while at the same time, the, the teams in Division 1A, there is a bit of pressure on them as well that they do actually have to, uh, I suppose, win a couple of games as well in order to uh, ensure they maintain Division 1 sta- Division one status as well. So I think that's how it should be fixed. It's just by going back to a model we've already seen. But look, the league's here now as well. The games are happening as well. And look, I think every team that I've seen, having watched the games at the weekend, I didn't see any team that looked like they were they weren't taking the league seriously anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. I'd be personally in favour of dropping down to five divisions, six teams per division, or something like that, so that the threat of relegation is very, very real for counties and make the league, you know, worth more again. But that being said, you did mention we did have some quality, quality games. First one was Cork two seventeen, Limerick twenty two points. Fantastic victory for Cork. Great start for Pat Ryan. A late win against the All Ireland champions. Yeah, look, and this was this was actually a really, really good game for the time of the year, and I really, really enjoyed this. And that look, first half, I suppose, bit bit daunting, I suppose, for Cork was that they go in sixteen eight down at half time, and uh, look, Limerick were absolutely turned it on. Hegarty was unmark unmarkable in the first half. That everything he touched was just turned to goal straight away, and that. They just seemed to be really, really sharp. They were hurling really, really well. That they were getting like Adam English in the corner as well looked really lively too. And they just looked to be like Declan Hannon and Dan Morrissey were hoovering up everything too as well. And then I suppose at half time, I suppose Cork came out early enough. Limerick were very late coming out of the change room at half time. And straight from the throw in, Tommy O'Connell's tearing into Tom Morrissey as well. And just those young Cork players, I thought, really, really stood up in the second half, particularly in the back line. Like, Owen Downey at fullback looked absolutely brilliant. And that, yeah, he's a fellow that, look, he clearly is very early in his strength and conditioning programme because you look at him beside Flanagan, who's been sculpted into that position after a few years at SNC. Whereas Downey's a big, big, strong, tall fellow as well, but just doesn't look like he'd the same build as well. But I thought he was absolutely brilliant. He hit an inspirational score as well. And he just looked really, really good. So he looks like a player that can that could really be built upon. Connor O'Callum beside him, really Tigerish cornerback as well. O'Connell, I already mentioned, and look, Kieran Joyce, like running out of words to describe him. He's absolutely fantastic as well. That just the, the, like the inspirational figure that he is. And just like, I think for Cork, yeah, they, they, their team was probably closer to their starting 15, I'd say later on the championship than 
what Limericks is going to be. But look, it's a good it's a good win for them as well. And that to come back from 16-8 down, they were excellent in the second half. And just to briefly touch on as well, really, really hope that Robbie O'Flynn's injury isn't serious because at the time it was absolutely sickening to watch just the sheer discomfort that he was in as well and how well he was been playing. They found that new role for him in the corner four, dropping out position. He looked really, really good. So like I really, really hope his championship isn't over. Yeah, no, 100%. Because he's been, in my opinion, he's really gone under the radar as someone that consistently, consistently for Cork, he brings a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 performance every time he steps on the pitch for them. And his goal and Declan Dalton's goal, where he pulled on it into the back of the net, they turbocharged Cork's comeback. Talk to me about the goals. Yeah, look, the, the Robbie O'Flynn was needed was that, look, that was the stage of the game. That started to get Cork back into it as well. Dalton... I don't think I can recall him in the first half getting on a single possession that it just, the ball didn't come his way whatsoever. And then the second half, he he essentially only had kind of two touches really in it. There. He laid the assist for O'Flynn for the goal and then he pulls in the goal on the ball for the goal himself. So look, it shows the the what what there is there with Dalton too. And I think that he's definitely a player worth sticking with for Cork as well. Is that just, he has that potential and he's got goals in him as well. And we've seen that him do it before for Cork too. So look, and I think the other big impact Kingston off the bench was really electric. And on a day when Lahan probably didn't fire as well as well, like he seemed to be, he seemed to be, his confidence seemed to be really low when he was making mistakes all over the place. But when the big moment at the end of the game with the score to, to level it up as well, he hit that score. So look, I think they will be enthused by that as well. But like I said, I don't think Limerick would be too worried because when they looked fit for the first 50 minutes of that game, they were playing really, really good stuff as well. And they did lose Hannon to like what looked like a bit of a cut in his hand anyway as well. He went off after about the 15 minute mark. Hegarty went off and look, Keane Lynch came on from him. Yeah, but like it was clear that Lynch hasn't really got a whole lot of work done. He didn't really look, uh, he didn't look himself on the day. So they they have to ease him back into it as well. So like, I think, I think Cork would be delighted to have got the win. But at the same time, like I think it's the same thing as last year where I don't think Limerick will be too concerned at all. And I think they'll actually probably be very satisfied with their performance because I think they showed a lot of a lot of positive signs, albeit they will be a little bit worried about look the it was a tough debut for David McCarthy in his debut in goals. I thought he found it quite difficult as well. And then the full back line, the backups Richie English and Aaron Costello. Definitely got the run around as well from the Cork forwards too. So that's, I think, the only slight concern is that they're the only two lines I think that Limerick were probably be a bit disappointed with. Yeah, and then another positive, I thought Colin Coughlin, again, looked fantastic at wing-back for Limerick throughout the game, even when Cork had them on the back foot. But definitely a perfect start for Pat Ryan and then the score at the end to win it. Just incredible scenes. We'll move then next to Galway, 23 points, Wexford, 15 points. The game which doubled up as the Walsh Cup final, Galway claiming that prize. And it was a game really where Galway at stages looked like they could really blow Wexford away, but Wexford's shooting at times was unbelievably poor. Yeah, it was... uh... I suppose in the first half, look, Wexford were Wexford were right in. I suppose, look, you know the way it, it works down Wexford Park as well is that it, they have their own climate down there and their own, and that it seems to be that the prevailing wind is. I've never seen it so strong. Is that every single game down there seems to be a game of two halves due to it? And yeah, look, Wexford probably like they started the game really, really well, but then look, Galway just kind of hung on in there the first half, playing into that breeze, and they got in. I think they went in maybe a point down. It was at half time, and. Uh, I might have even been level, actually, I think it was as well. But that was the thing, was that Wexford hit a lot of aimless ball from their own 65-45 as well, that they just drove it. And it was nearly kind of trickling out over the over the end line a fair bit too. And then in the second half, Galway used it so much better. And look, they'll be they'll, they'll be quite quite happy, I think, with how, uh, with how it went for them as well. Like, Nyland is an interesting one. that On the freeze, he's absolutely brilliant. That He never seems to miss in the freeze. But the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about him for is just whether whether he has enough pro- productivity in open play, and that like that's going to be a real interesting one. Is that for Galway is who plays centre half forward? Because I think it is going to be a straight shoot up between him and Connor Cooney. Because with Cooney, I think the free taking isn't as good as with Nyland. But I think Cooney gives you a bit more of a ball winner in the half forward line as well. So I think that's one to watch out for. 
other positives, I suppose, from Galway, I thought like some of their extra panel members really stood up well. Uh, Sean Lanana midfield looked really strong. Owen Lawless looks to be a good player to have in the backs as well. And then as well, come off the bench, Liam Collins is absolutely electric as well. Like he's only a small, slight enough fella as well, but like with a bit of SSC in there as well, he's like a very, very natural hurler. I think he looks to be one of the most skilled players I've seen so far this year anyway. And uh, yeah, look, I think Galway, what we're going to see from them this year is that they're going to correct some of the issues that they had against Limerick last year, is that their panel's going to be way, way stronger. And that I reckon by the time we get around to the latter stage of the All-Ireland this year, I think Henry's going to be a lot more comfortable using his bench than what he was anyway in that Limerick game last year. Agreed. And it was definitely apparent that in the Limerick game, they needed you know people to come in off the bench. So that was crucial last few minutes. And Limerick just had the guys on the bench to turn to, the likes of David Reedy, that really dragged them over the line that day. Another one, Don Loche, I thought he looked very impressive in full forward. He's you know, a minor all-star, someone that you know has been tipped to break through for a few years now. Um, interestingly, and I do want your opinion on this, Conor Whelan's positioning was interesting in this game. He played a lot more deeper this time. Yeah, no, he did, and that was the thing is that he he came out and look, he was look, he was he was he won an absolute world of ball, and it was really interesting in that he often kind of rotated a little bit with Jason Flynn. Jason Flynn went in a few times. Don O'Shea kind of sometimes came out, and then he went in as well. So they all took their there are brief stages during the game where they did rotate, but Whelan did tend to be mostly out around either centre half forward or wing forward. And it, I think it does make sense because, like, you'd struggle to think of a forward that's a better ball winner than Whelan. He has the size well over six foot as well, and look like, the way he's built as well. And you think about like the, the paw he has on him as well, is that he's just this absolute weapon that to, you can just launch puck outs on top of as well. And look, nine times out of ten, he's going to come down with it. So, look, I think he's. He's an absolute weapon for Galway to have there. And I think Henry, he's trying out a few things with him as well. And he's got that versatility that, like, later on in the year, to, that you can have. Look, like, Cahill Mannion will be coming back in as well. He'll probably push out a bit more than we and Michael back in. But it gives him that versatility as well, that maybe Jason Flynn can go in further on. Connor Cooney can go in. Nyland can go in and stuff as well. So that's the thing, I think, is that they... Uh, they're, they're trying out a few things as well. I do think maybe later on during the year, I think we pr- they probably will go back to a Concanon and Connor Whelan full forward line, I think, though, because I do think that's what probably is the most dangerous as well and allow Cahill Mannion to be that roving corner forward and go out and play around midfield if he wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, then, obviously, on top of that, we have to look at Wexford. Their shooting, as I mentioned, was not the best. But they were missing some, you know, key key players. The likes of Lee Chin, the likes of Rory O'Connor, who they would turn to to score a lot for them. What would you make of that if you're Darry Egan? Yeah, look, that's the thing. I think that's the nail on the head there. Is that, yeah, look, it's not it's not ideal, and that the scoring wasn't great. But at the same time, as well, is that like Rory O'Connor and Chin are going to add on. You could nearly say they could add on seven or eight more points to that team as well, and that. It's very difficult to to make a kind of a, a call on them when you're missing your two best forwards. You can even add in Jack O'Connor into the wing forward as well. I'd say he's good for a few points too there as well. So, like, I do. I actually think that Wexford. I wouldn't be too worried about about Wexford. I think that yeah, like it's. Uh, I think what we're gonna find is that I think Galway are actually in a in a pretty good place at the moment, and that based on that, I'd say, argued that they were probably the most impressive performance I watched at the weekend, and I think they just looked to be really, really sharp, and that just with the way they are at the moment, it'd be interesting if Henry rotates the team an awful lot as well, but if they give the league a good crack, then look, they'd be my early tips as well to uh, well to be topping anyway, uh, to topping their, their division, I suppose, anyway as well, because I just think that they look to be in a really, really sharp spot at the moment. And they just seem to be finding a few extra players at the moment. So I don't think from a Wexford perspective, I wouldn't be too worried because when it comes to championship, the reality is, is that everything's going to go through like it has done recently as well. Everything's going to go through Chin, McDonald and Rory O'Connor. And if you can find a few players, like for instance, Charlie McGuckin hitting three points is encouraging. So if you can have him complimenting the wings, you can put Jack O'Connor back in. And then that leaves, if you want to have Cahill Dunbar as well as a rotating corner forward as well, I still think that's a pretty good forward line. And when it gets to Croke Park, if you have those six forwards up there as well, you even got the likes of Oshin Foley's players like that as well. That if you have those players around, uh, yep, if you have those players around, Oshin Pepper as well, another good player. 
like I think that team will still score enough as well. And I think that once they get those players back, I think they'll be fine. Yeah, no, I agree. Galway definitely impressed me as well that you said that. Um, two new eras also began over the weekend at Fraher Field in Waterford. David Fitzgerald's second coming with Waterford and Michal Dunihu's era with Dublin. And the opening game between the two of these sides finished Waterford 219, Dublin 316. And for Dublin, I mean, talk about they almost, instead of lulling us into, you know, positivity, they almost lulled us into negativity. Waterford. You know, blew us out of the traps there in the first few minutes going, I think, what was it, 1-4 to no score ahead. And then all of a sudden, Dublin just found a lease of life. Keno Sullivan, you know, burst into life in the full forward line with Alex Considine. Two of them look fantastic. It ends up being a draw. Donald Burke at the last minute free to get that draw. I'm pretty happy as a Dublin fan with that. I thought, I think... Considering the like the turnover, the squad, the likes of Chris Crummy, Liam Rush gone, obviously Sutcliffe wasn't there. I'm happy enough that we ca- we got that result. Yeah, look, it, this was an absolutely bizarre game. It, was, it had absolutely everything. And like you talk about there, the early black card, the early goal for Waterford. And then, look, I think the first 15 minutes was absolute car crash from Dublin. And that's, they couldn't just, they couldn't get on any ball whatsoever. And to bounce back and get in level, at half time after those first 15 minutes was absolutely insane, I suppose. And that I think, uh, look, Waterford will probably uh, look that they, they looked like they could have been a good bit sharper than what they were because it wasn't fully clicking for them as well. But at the same time, it was a very, very entertaining, particularly second half, very, very entertaining game as well. Just to briefly start on as well, like you mentioned there, the, the two man full forward line of O'Sullivan and Constantine looked absolutely electric and, that's the big positive, I think, for Dublin is the last couple of years is that like the, the full forward line just haven't been scoring enough. And the two of them, I suppose, they weren't starting last year as well. But we know of all about O'Sullivan that he's been playing with injuries a little bit as well. But if we can get the two of them in there as well, maybe that might free up Ronan Hayes to play out the field a bit more where he can be a puck out tread as well. If you can go with the two of them inside, they look really, really dynamic. And uh yeah, look, they're, they're definitely going to be a trek going forward as well. And that was the, the underrated aspect of that is that the players they were up against there were Conor Gleeson and Conor Prunty. And like that was the, the one of the, the games that I've seen Prunty in the most amount of trouble as well. He looked like all over the place at times that he really, really struggled with O'Sullivan. And particularly like in the first half when O'Sullivan played, like he seemed to have Prunty all over the place. And I've very rarely seen that as well. So that is encouraging from a Dublin perspective. Keen Boland coming back in there as well is a big plus too. But look, it's the same kind of issues I think facing Dublin is that they need to find a midfield and uh, that's going to be the challenge going forward. And look, briefly as well to say, despite all the issues they faced as well, they played the last 15 minutes with two extra men and they went into that period level. So look, they will be disappointed not to get the result. But at the end of the day, like you talk about it, like you talk about what's uh, the league and everything as well. I don't think this will be a result that uh, will be living too long in in uh, in Michal Dunhu's memory as like as something that's going to drive him nuts. I think. Yeah, no, I think definitely when you're looking at it, if you had said to me you're going to draw on for Hafeel at the start, I would have you know been delighted with that. But considering we had two extra men on the field and we were level going into those last couple of minutes. It is a little bit disappointing that we didn't get the victory, but then again, you know, put it into context, going away to a Waterford side with Davy Fitz notorious for, you know, getting a response out of his team straight away. I mean, I'll take that for sure. For Waterford on the flip side, two red cards, I don't think you can argue with either of them. Jack Fagans obviously was two yellows and Stephen Bennett's was a straight red for, you know, a bit of a weird punch on one of the Dublin defenders. But... I don't think that they, they can argue with either of them. Will they be? They'll surely be disappointed not getting a victory in this game. Yeah, I think I think they probably will like that. Look at home as well, I suppose, and that look the start that they had. I think look, Ruben Halloran had a great chance for a goal, and that goes in. That would have been, I think, two five to two points. And at that stage, look, it's definitely definitely game over as well. Like quickly to touch on the red cards. Look, the Fagan one. It was the pull down which led to the penalty as well. So look, I don't. What a catch by Keen Boland to set that up. Yeah, yeah, no, look, it was great play. And now, look, he was, he was a real, really, really good addition in there as well, deserving of his man of the match. And, uh, but, like, he can't have any complaints about that, Fagan, I don't think. And then, look, the Bennett one was a real bizarre one, I suppose, that I look, I, there was no intention whatsoever, but he did whack him in the face anyway as well. So I think that, uh, 
look, I don't even the the little bit of a melee that kind of led came after it as well. I think you saw the Dublin players as well knew themselves they didn't mean it, but look, he probably look he one of those that it's unfortunate for him, but he had to go anyway. So uh look it'll be interesting for Waterford now. They'll be without they'll be without Bennett for the next day now. So they'll need somebody else in the freeze as well taking over. So it'll be interesting to watch. And obviously uh, Porrick Matney's retired. Yep. Yeah. So look I think it gives an opportunity whether they might go might give Porrick Fitzgerald a shot anyway as well. It looks to be a really, really good player come true as well. They maybe they'll give him a run the freeze the next day because he's been tipped to do so for a while now. But that's the thing is that I think uh I think what I think Waterford would be uh, like they they'll be quite happy though with the reaction though with that situation to find themselves with 50 minutes to go. Ozzy came on and looked absolutely brilliant as well. That he uh, I suppose he kind of dragged them over dragged them over the line to get a result. I suppose on his own for a little bit in stages there at the end as well. So looked I think they'll be happy as well when the big guns came on that they managed to keep a, a semblance of control over the game even despite. Uh, the, the two man deficit as well. So look, it was just very very entertaining game, and uh, yeah, look, I don't I don't think I think both teams would just be happy with the run out they've got. And look, Dublin, like yeah, they could have won the game, but based on the, how they started that game to get any sort of result out of it, I think they won't be too too upset about it with plenty of new faces. For sure, for positive sure. signs definitely going forward for the Dubs. Uh, another new era started in Kilkenny, Brian the post Brian Cody era, the Derek Ling era. That started off with victory in Corrigan Park in Belfast. Kilkenny won 18 and from 15 points. A notoriously difficult place to go. We've seen teams like Clare be beaten there before. Wexford, obviously, were held to a draw there in 2021 as well. For Kilkenny, a good win under Derek Ling and a new star there in Billy Drennan. Yeah, look, he was brilliant. He was really, really good. And the thing is, like... People will probably look at it and then they'll say, "Oh yeah, it was one nine eight freeze and that like he was just clipping as well." His his output though from general play was absolutely fantastic, and that he has this ability to win really hard breaking ball as well. Like the like 50-50 ball that goes into full forward line, he seemed to come out with it time and time again, and it led to a fair few assists too. So he has an awful lot to his game for a real young fellow as well. I think he just turned twenty. I think he looks ready as well on that. Like a lot of people are saying that maybe he might be eased into it as well, but I think he looks like he could be a starter this year as well. That you look kind of the, the full forward line he had, Matt, him, Mossy Cohen, and Billy Ryan as well. I think he looked he looked just as good as Mossy Cohen in, in there as well. And that I think the two of them could end up playing beside those two and on Cody could be the tree for uh, for Kilkenny this year. I think this uh, I think he actually does look ready, Billy Drennan, and uh, look he's a great great finisher as well as the goal shows too. Yeah, and interestingly enough, on top of that, Porrick Walsh, who was deployed in the forwards, was back at centre half back in this game. Do you think that's where Ling is going to put him, or where does Richie Reid fit into this? Yeah, look, I think Porrick Walsh will absolutely be the centre back this year. I think that he looks that's his best position by a mile. And he, look, I think Drennan was given man the match, but if you look beyond that, it, it had to be Porrick Walsh beyond that. That his positional sense there as well is absolutely fantastic. He doesn't even cover that much ground that he just holds the position and his reading in the game there is really, really good. A lot of people kill Kenny from calling for him to be moved back into there as well because it just it is his best position. And uh like I, I know Richie Reid had a had a good year there last year, but I'd I look I I think Poor Walsh will absolutely be in the half back line anyway. And that if if Richie Reid does retain centre half back then Poor Walsh will be beside him. But I think personally I think Poor Walsh plays the position is slightly better than Richie Reid and uh Based, I suppose, on what I've seen, I think, I think Porrick Walsh will be in there. And look, you, you're looking at. I thought Killian Buckley was really, really good. That he's flat turned back the years as well. The role that he's playing with them as well, he's up there as well. David Blanchfield looks good in that line too. Dara Corcoran's going to push hard for a spot in the halfback line. So look, I don't think they. Uh, I think they'll be able to manage the loss of Mikey Carey, even though it's an absolutely huge loss. That they've got players stepping up and that they look, they look pretty strong. I think there as well. Interesting. Maybe Evan Sheffield might get a run as well. Yeah, he's definitely an option. Uh, and Kerry's a huge loss. You're absolutely right about that. Antrim on the flip side, you know, uh, again, bit of a moral victory in a sense. But in terms of out of the three sides, we're going to come to Leash and Westmead's defeats now in a minute. But out of the three sides, they definitely were the side to put up the biggest fight in terms of their defeat. Would you be confident if you're, you know, Antrim that they can stay up this year? Yeah, look, it's look, the Antrim and Carrigan Park is like, is a. Uh, 
is uh, it's a whole different ball game, I suppose, as well. And the other thing that went kind of under the radar is the conditions were nearly unplayable up there as well. It was very, very tough conditions. So the rain was, uh, yeah, the, the rain was absolutely insane. And that, I think, look, if anybody came in to, what, to see me watching uh, watching it in the sitting room, probably watching, wondering why I'm just watching a lot of water on the screen because you couldn't see anything really at times. And that, like, I suppose it's just a really, really tough place to go. And Antrim know that as well. They were really right in that game for the whole way. And I suppose only a late couple of points by Kilkenny stretched out a little bit more. So look up there as well. Like, they're always a threat that they're going to turn the team over as well. If they turn the team over up there as well, I wouldn't be shocked. And that's probably why that they're the favourites, I suppose, to uh, they got the more favourable side to draw. That Yeah, they've got Leash on their side. And look, we'll be getting to Leash in a second, who got, uh, like, the mother and father of all beatings at the weekend. So based off that, look, I suppose you have to consider them the favourites right now for uh, for staying up. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you there. You mentioned about Leash's mother and father of all beatings. That was 232 to 18 points against Tipperary. It was in Temple Stadium, Liam Cahill's first game. It spelled out trouble right from the get-go, and it certainly delivered on that. Yeah, look, and uh, the, the the interesting thing about Tip as well is all the positional changes straight away. Like Michael Brain has been talked about and full back to death already, but... Uh, I think uh, Seamus Kennedy at wing four is a really interesting one. And then the latest one, I suppose, that we're seeing now is Bonnermar full forward as a target man that's actually playing in there as well. And like people got to jump straight away at looking like he didn't score. But I think I saw was that he was directly responsible, direct assists for one four in the first half and everything just seemed to stick off him as well. So, yeah, it's a few interesting ones. And I think that what Cattle's shown is that he looks like he's going to stick with those players in there as well. They looked to found some really good players like Connor Stagel in midfield. Looks like he looks a search in there as well. Really, really good. And then that half back line all of a sudden of Brian O'Mara, Ron O'Mara, and Brian McGrath is absolutely dominant. So all of a sudden, I think a lot of positivity for Tip, but you have to bear in mind it is Leash in there as well. Everything looks great at the moment, but I think watching them against Kilkenny next week will give them a better understanding of where they're at. But from all accounts, they're absolutely flying and training and that they Apparently, they've been trained like to an inch of their lives over Christmas, and that the level of training that they've received since Cahill has taken over has been absolutely huge. So, the question remains with them as well like, are they doing a bit too much too soon? I, that's going to be the, the question mark hanging over Cahill a little bit based on what happened last year. But I think Tip at the moment, they're, uh, they're in a very good spot at the moment, so they just need to. Uh, yeah, they, I suppose they just need to manage their season a little bit as well, make sure they're right. They're trying out a lot of players. Garage O'Connor looks to be a great find. I think he's going to start for them this year as well. And even Sean Ryan, the corner, looks to be really good too. So I think, look, season's gone really, really well for Tip so far. And, uh, yeah, just I'm kind of curious to see how they keep getting on when they uh, start to face the bigger teams now. Yeah, no, definitely. I think there's an element with Tip that because it was always so obvious that Liam Cahill was going to eventually be the Tipperary manager the fact that he is now it might have a feel of a bit of a bit of destiny about it for Tip that maybe that has given them an extra gear to train harder and visualize an All-Ireland at the end of this the other beatdown that was put on the weekend Clare 427 Westmead 14 points very difficult start for fortunes lads there in Westmead it was always going to be a difficult one going away to Cusick Park in Ennisto and it sure turned out to be yeah look Westmead have drawn the short straw here with going into the group of death no kind of winnable fixtures looking straight away for them as well look I think they'll be hoping that look down in, in Mullingar that they can make it really difficult for a team as well but there's no game jumping off the page there's a game where they'd say that like we have a great chance of this one as well so look I think it's it's a tough it's a tough uh, it's a tough one on Westmead as well as that yeah they're getting great exposure playing division one sides but like it is tough on them as well, having to play the top sides every single week when you are trying to develop as a team. But from a Clare perspective, like not a whole lot you can kind of say about it really based on like, yeah, they've, it's job done and it looks impressive in parts, like particularly in the forward line, like Mark Rogers is going to be a huge player for them this year. He's absolutely electric. The interesting other one is Davey Conroy center out forward, scored five from play. He looks to be, he looks to be a real talent as well. He had a great, uh, Munster League as well and he hit. We was hitting scores throughout that too so it'll be interesting to watch him a little bit more and Aidan McCarthy now is, looks to be taking over the freeze whether that remains when Tony Kelly returns anyway but it was, I thought it was interesting to see him take over when Peter Duggan was on the field so uh, yeah look good to see McCarthy back to full strength and the other one as well Adam Hogan in the corner I think he's the, the player to watch out for this year and don't be shocked if uh, 
he forced his way into this Clare starting team later on this year. Yeah, no, they've yeah. tons and tons and tons of players that they could choose from Clare. I mean, you could make two starting 15s with this Clare panel and they'd give each other a serious game. I mean, you could say that probably for a lot of teams, but this Clare one is probably the one I'd put it as most applicable to. Very interesting opening round of the Allianz League, Luke. And um, you know, how are you feeling? Like, has this changed your perspective on who you think is going to be strong, all these results? Yeah, but look, it's, I, do, I think it's so impossible to tell who you think is going to win it because it, do, I co- it does come that, down to that that you can make a prediction and then it, you can get to the final and then a team will look at it and say, right, we're two weeks out from our start championship team and they could send the B team out to play the final. I, I wouldn't be shocked that when we get to the final that teams actually send out the B team or something like that and they rest players for the final because I just don't think you can do it. I just don't think you can send your full team out to play an absolute war of a game when you know that you've got four weeks, well, essentially four weeks in a row, maybe with one gap in the middle of just pure wars coming up as well. So that's why I think it's very, very difficult to call. If I'm looking at the teams that are probably look the sharpest at the moment, I think I think Galway and Kilkenny might, sorry, Galway and Tipperary might be the ones at the moment that look probably the most trained and got the most work done as well. I think maybe Cork might actually go for the league a bit more considering that they have a bye week one. So that would give them a three week run into as well. So maybe in a league final, if they were to get to it, they'd give it a proper crack as well. So very, very difficult to call, but I'm just, I'm just looking forward to watching games week in, week out as well. And uh, particularly as well, just to watch Limerick, a few question marks over them as well. I think the story to watch for them is uh, whether Aaron Galan returns to the panel or not, because from all I can hear at the moment, he's not currently with them at the moment. So that's the real interesting storyline right now. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, his inclusion would shake up the championship for sure. I mean, he's that good a player and he's been so crucial to Limerick's success over the last few years. But that is the full recap of the Allianz round one of the Hurling League 2023 here on Play on GAA, guys. Thank you for giving us your time. Do join us on the next one. And until the next one, guys, take care.